Blessed be the people of God today. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. I'm coming to you with the living word of God from Genesis to Revelation. And I am yours truly, Evangelist Shirley Leslie Wolf. And this is the ministry. This is a ministry, a ministry of reconciliation, the same ministry that we as the people of God, God has given to us to talk about him, to teach about him, to love him, to show forth his kindness to those that don't have the understanding or those who just need some help, those that just love love God and who want to love and share God all over the world, wherever we can. So this is our time. Blessed be God. Thank you, Father God, for the living word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, I'm just feeling great today, and I pray, God, that all his people are feeling well, because sometimes we go through things, and sometimes we have troubles and trials and tests. Sometimes we go through things, and we don't even know how to handle a midnight situation. Sometimes we, it's a daybreak situation. Things happen, and, but we're standing in need of a blessing, and only God can help us. So at this particular time, I want to, as I come before you, I want to come before you. Hallelujah. And my thought for today, my word that I believe that God has allowed me to say is, this is life in the spirit. We're going to be going to Romans, the eighth chapter, and we're going to start there. But there's life in the spirit. And I love that because there's life in God. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And when we want life, we need life. We need the substance of life. Just like we got bones, you got bones. But you know what? Each bone is connected to another bone. But the connection to the bone, hallelujah, from one bone to the other is the marrow. Okay, the substance, and that's what we need in Christ Jesus. We need God's substance, substance in Christ Jesus. We need God's substance. We need that 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 extra, the extra thing that God gives us. Hallelujah! As I said, it the substance, the marrow, the 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 the, the life giving, life holding on, the not life connecting source. Hallelujah to these bones that make them yet live and breathe. Hallelujah! Even though they're in our bodies and blood is flowing through our bodies, we need that life substance. And that life substance is the word of God. For the word of God, hallelujah, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We're going to go to the word. Praise God. And I pray God's blessing upon his people. Thank you for joining me today in Jesus' name. And we're going to Romans, the eighth chapter, and we're going to start at the first verse where it says, hallelujah, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I love it. I love it. Thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your holy word. Thank you for your holy will. Thank you for your holy way, God, because you're telling us, you're giving us this blessed hope. You're giving us this blessed assurance in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. You're telling us, hallelujah, in the book of Romans, you're telling us there is therefore now no condemnation. Hallelujah. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Oh my God, hallelujah. In this book of Romans, God is letting us know sometimes there's condemnation and it comes from many sources. Hallelujah. Sometimes it comes from within ourselves in the sense that we, 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 we hold on to things that we did in the past and, and or somebody talked about or brought up in the past or in the future, in the present tense. And we, we, we get despondent. We get a little heartbroken and we get sad and we, we get depressed and down and out because of things that have transpired in our life and is transpiring or has transpired. But God is letting us know, listen, listen. Trust in me, believe in me, hope in me, hallelujah, for I am the hope of the world, hallelujah. I 
am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. I am the God that you need to believe in, that you need to trust in. I am God and I do not fail. I am God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the God of the universe. I am the creator of the heavens and the earth, the world and they that dwell therein. What you need, God's got it in the name of Jesus. And I needed that. I needed that today. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. I need it each and every day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because God has told me in his word, he said, except you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can do nothing. But if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask for what you will. Again, I'm going back to the Word of God. Hallelujah. The living Word of God. The Holy Word of God. Where it says in Romans, hallelujah, the eighth chapter. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. God teach us how to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Because the flesh is enmity. The flesh is evilness. The flesh is hatefulness. The, hate, the flesh is wickedness. It is against God. And it can only be against God because only the spirit have life. And God is life. And God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and the truth. This flesh is filthy. This flesh ain't going nowhere. This flesh is going back to the dust. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the spirit is life everlasting. And we, it does not appeal what we shall be, but we shall be like Christ if we do what he says. And that's why he told us in Romans, hallelujah, eight and one. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. We got to walk after the spirit. We got to seek the Lord like we've never sought him before. We got to believe in him and trust in him because it is because of his spirit. It is because of his mercy. It's because of his grace that we are not consumed. For the law of the spirit is life in Christ Jesus. I'm talking about a life in Christ Jesus. I'm talking about a life, hallelujah, that's going to live on after this. And let me tell you, I may sound kind of strange when I said that, a life that will live on after this. But I'm telling you the truth, because when Jesus was here preaching the gospel, he told the people that if they could believe in him, they would never taste death. And I was concerned about that scripture. I said, no, people died every day. He's talking about why is he saying to us, hallelujah, that we, will, we can live and, and never die? Yeah, uh, to my, in my mind, okay, no, I can't see that. But then, hallelujah, as we get closer to God, and if God had mercy on us, and he began to teach us, he let me know that this, this body, this body, hallelujah, is, is not the spirit of God. This flesh is gonna go back to flesh, dust to dust and ashes to ash. But the spirit of the living God, hallelujah, that lives inside of us, when we accept him, that spirit will live on in glory. Hallelujah, that spirit, hallelujah, will be more like Christ. That spirit, will see that spirit man, that spirit man, hallelujah, that love God, that's made after God's own image, after God's own likeness. Because you've got to remember, when God made man, he made him out of the dust of the earth. But when he got ready and he was finished, hallelujah, working on man, what did he do? Hey, glory for God. He, 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 he bowed down and he blew. Hallelujah, ain't that something? God, hallelujah, got close to us, put his mouth toward man's nostrils and blew into his nostril the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God is God, and besides him, there is none other. So hold on, you that are walking a little bow-legged, you that might not be walking up straight like you should be walking. You that have made problems and said things or done things just as we all have done. But we got that blessed hope, blessed hope that there's no condemnation to us who walk 
not after the flesh, but after the spirit, hallelujah, and the spirit of Christ, oh God. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Good God Almighty, thank you, Lord God, that you have made us free from the law. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, from the law of sin and death through the spirit of life of Christ, hallelujah, in whom we believe. He said, because if thou canst believe, all things are possible. If you can believe in the name of the Jesus. See, the sin of man may not want to believe. The sin of man might not want to accept Christ. The sin of man think that this is all it, that there is no new beginning, there is no uprising, there is no new Jerusalem. You got some that don't believe, but God said in his word, in the name of Jesus, in the name of our gracious Father, he told us, hallelujah, that there is another life, and there's a life also, and you can choose the life of God in Christ Jesus, that if you can believe, all things are possible, and you can live and live again. And we're going to live, hallelujah, in the new Jerusalem. We're going to live where we won't be down here with all this trouble, all this anxiety, all this wickedness, all this perverseness, all this mean and evilness. We're going to live where we can all say howdy, howdy, and never goodbye, but not down here in this old world where people don't want Christ. That's why they unbeliever can think that he gonna yell, I'm gonna just die. That's why some take their life because they think that it's gonna be over and that's it. They ain't gonna get up no more. They won't have to pay no more. They won't have to suffer no more. But oh no, that's gonna be the beginning of the end for the ones that don't believe. Trust Christ. My prayer to you today, my hope for you today is to believe God's word, to trust God's word. Don't doubt him. Just believe and you shall receive because God said it. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. And if you can believe, just as it says in Romans 8 and 1, there is now no fear. There is now therefore no condemnation to those that believe in Christ Jesus. If you can believe, all things are possible with God if you can't believe. But if you don't believe, there's a great, a great sadness. There's a great judgment day coming. There's a day coming when we got to give an account of the things we did because we did not believe. What go to hell? just because you don't believe. What if you're wrong? What if you thought you was right and found out you was wrong? What if you get there and you can see without a shadow of a doubt that you were wrong and then you can't take it back. You can't change your way. You can't change what you've done. You can't change what you thought in your mind. You can't change what was in your heart. But this time, while we yet in the land of the living, we can change, we can believe, we can hope, we can trust in the most high God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. We can believe in God. We can trust in God. We can hope in God. In the name of Jesus, we don't have to be sorrowful. On that great getting up morning, we don't have to be sad. Hallelujah. We don't have to be like some will do. They'll be running from the face of him that cometh, and they're going to say, to the mountains, hide me from the face of him that sat on the throne. Hide me when he come with great power and with the holy angels of God. We don't have to say that because all you got to do right now and today is believe in your heart and believe in your heart. Trust him accept him. Oh, you know how. Say, Lord, I want to believe. I don't know how to believe. Show me how to believe. I 
I want to believe you. I want to trust you. I want to go back with you. I want to see you. I want to make it to that great getting up morning. I want to rise holy. I want to rise holy because I want to forgive my enemies. I want to bless them that curse me. I want to pray for them that despitefully misuse me because it's going to be worth it all. It's going to be worth every penny. It's going to be worth every word that's been said. Every word, every lie, every serious, serious mean word that was spoken. It's going to be worth it all on that great getting up morning when we rise holy, when we stand before the almighty God. It's going to be worth it. Come on, tell God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I know you see what I'm going through. I know you see what I did last night. I know you know what I did this morning. I know you know how I talked the wrong way. I know you know I looked the wrong way. I didn't think right. I didn't do right. I didn't treat my sister right. I didn't treat my brother right. Me and my husband didn't agree together. This day, oh God, and I'm telling you that, and I'm telling you this now, because sometimes we can leave our home, we can leave our various destinations and not make it back. So Lord, I want to get my heart right with you right now why I can, why I can breathe, why I can live and help my being because on that great getting up morning, I want to be able to talk to you. I want to be able to be clean because I want my record to be clean. And it's easy because you said it's easy. All I have to do is repent. Ask God to forgive me from my heart. And if you don't know how to do that, say, Lord, like I've had to do, teach me how to repent. Teach me how to forgive. Teach me how to forget. I don't want to hold no records of the evil that was done to me. I want to forgive because God, when you come for me, I don't want to have to be running. I don't want to be hiding. I don't want to be saying, oh my God, whoa, Jesus, can't talk because I'm afraid because I know that it's over that day. I won't get another chance, but I want to be ready. I want God's people to be ready. I want the set a man to be ready. I want the pimp to be ready. I want the liar to be ready. I want the evil one to be ready. Those that have done evil, said things you shouldn't have said, did things that you shouldn't did, like all of us have at some point in time in our life. But God, that same God that forgave me, a wicked, wretched sinner, he will forgive you. Turn from your wicked ways. Disobedient child. Stop being disobedient. If your mother tell you to go to the store, go to the store. If your daddy said, don't go outside, believe me, don't go, because I was disobedient. That's how I got caught, and my hand got cut real bad. That's how I broke my leg, because I was disobedient when I was a child. Because sometimes you don't get back to God. Sometimes things happen. Accidents can happen in a car. You went somewhere that you shouldn't have went, that your mother told you, and you thought you was just going to get back, but you never got back home. You died in an accident. You died on the freeway. Died on the highway. Died behind the house. Being someplace you shouldn't have been. But God that we serve, if you repent, if you tell God, forgive me, if you tell God, help me. God knows we need help. I can't do it by myself. I can't have no strength on my own. But there's a God that we can talk to. There's a God that we can lean on. There's a God we can depend on. There's a God that can help us. There's a God that can fix us. There's a God that can make us. There's a God that can mold us. There's a God that can shape us. There's a God that'll forgive us, that'll deliver us, that'll set us free, that can put us on high. Hallelujah! Can bring us from the guttermost to the uppermost. There's a God, 
hallelujah, that sits high, but yet he looks low. He looks beyond sinners' faults. He looks beyond sinners' needs. He looks beyond all the evil and the wicked that we've done. When I lied and I shouldn't have lied, when I cheated and I shouldn't have cheated, when I did evil and I shouldn't have done evil, when I had, hallelujah, committed adultery, when I had done dirt, when I had, oh my God, had abortions, done wickedness, hallelujah, the God that I serve, he'll save you, he'll sanctify you, he'll baptize you, he'll fill you with the Holy Ghost and power. So when he comes, he's coming like a thief in the night. You're not going to have time, hallelujah, to get ready. We got to be ready like a woman of God once told me in church, at her church, Dr. Dawn Evelyn Davis, she told me, you can't be getting ready. You got to be ready, because he going to come in an hour that you know not. Know ye not that he is a God that sits high and looks low. So we got to be ready when he comes. We got to have that heart. We got to have that mind. We got to have that soul. We got to have that spirit to be ready, to be ready, to be ready. That's what God wants us to do. Lord, I want to be ready. And I'm here to help any one of your people. Whatever you give me to say, what comes up is going to come out. Hallelujah. And God is bad to the bone. God is rough. Hallelujah. Seek it about some. God is tough. He can say what he want to say. He can do what he want to do because that's God. But he's a God of love. So he's extending the invitation. He's extending the hope. He's extending Oh my God, hallelujah. His love and his loving kindness because he wants us to know that he's yet there standing with outstretched arms saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me because my yoke is easy and my burdens is light. Oh, I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just like one old hungry beggar trying to show you where I found some food. You know, a beggar, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I found some food. Just like those two men in, in the book of the Bible who had leprosy. They was out there dying. Israel was besieged by her enemies. They was out there dying. They couldn't come in the city. They weren't clean. They was filthy. And they saw something, and they went and found that the, the enemy was all destroyed and left everything they had. And they said, why sit here and die? It's not right for us to do this. Let us go in the city and tell the people about God. And that's what I'm saying to you. Let us not sit here and not do. Let us tell the people about the God of Abraham. Let us tell them, and the reason why I'm, I'm really stuck on that because God, I know what God said to Abraham better now. I understand better. Abraham, he told Abraham, and Abraham shall all the families of the earth be blessed. We are blessed today. I don't care what race you are, what creed you are, what color. We are blessed because of faithful Abraham and because God made a promise to Abraham and because God cannot lie. He said in Abraham shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So if anything, we should love the Jewish people because God said to Abraham, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed because of you. And I thank God for his holy word, the living word. Father, I pray that you touch your people from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. I'm asking you to look on the sick and the afflicted, those that are hurting God, those that are struggling, those that are going through kidney dialysis, those that are going to various sicknesses and diseases. Please, God, touch your people. Heal your people in the blessing.